Engineer Libiwa. The speaker, sir, I have two supplementary questions for um, Minister. I think good to hear about installing more CCTV doors, etc. All those are hardware infrastructure. I would like to ask, is there a more concern, deep-rooted culture of sexual harassment in our campuses? And if there is, what action is going to be taken to eliminate this deep-rooted culture of sexual harassment? And the second question is, I think what we need is education or even campaign on zero tolerance towards sexual harassment. So in this aspect, is there anything, anything that can be done? Thank you. First question on is there a deep-rooted trend on sexual harassment? Based sexual harassment versus sexual uh, misconduct, there, there are several types. Uh, of course, there is that the most serious, you've got outrage or modesty, sexual assault, you have uh, sexual harassment, you can also have the big bulk, two-thirds, is still voyeurism. Yeah. So based on the data I gave just now, there has not been a rising trend in the last three years. However, I do also acknowledge all the explanations that some of the literature has given, including the Big Read article on today I mentioned earlier, that the young today grow up with internet, they are exposed to pornography websites. They know of uh, miniature photography and recording devices. And sometimes they get it through their WhatsApp. And over time, they may have the idea that actually this is no big deal. So I think this is what we worry about. It doesn't manifest in terms of higher incidence rates, at least over the last three years, it has been constant, but we do worry about these underlying trends. So I do agree with the members, we need to send a strong signal, and I think it has to be a combination of measures between what I and Minister Indrani have talked about, Stuff, tougher penalty, education, physical, physical security, improve the physical security, as well as better support for both the victims as well as sometimes for the offenders in counselling them and helping them turn over a new leaf. Ms. Cheryl Chan. I've got uh, two questions for Minister Ong. The first one is, um, had this incident not been taken on the social media and gained so much attention, would the Ministry and the AUs have taken actions to review the disciplinary framework? That's the first question. The second, it's because you, you mentioned that the AUs are now undergoing this full review. When they are ready, would the Ministry ensure that the revisions are adequate and serve its purpose? Sorry, I didn't catch your first question because I thought I just announced that they will review their framework. What? I, it's, yeah, it's true, but then the thing is, if this incident was not taken to social media and hasn't gained that much attention, would the Ministry and the EUs already have taken oh. this? Because in the last three years, although there was no increase in okay, new rates, I see. Should we decline? not have done this earlier, in other words? The, the, the AUs do review their discipline framework from time to time. The NUS one was reviewed about five years ago, and I think they probably is due for review, but I think what this incident taught all of us is that there is a stronger concern and some underlying trend, and I think we do need to make it tougher at the egregious end of the offence. Should we have done this earlier? I wish we have, but I think there are many things that we do sometimes ahead of time, and we are also being questioned, why do you do it now? You know, are you going to open up other problems? In this case, unfortunately, that didn't happen. But I think what is more important is immediate action is being taken now, and I'm confident there will be swift and decisive actions. Second question, how do we know that it will be adequate? I think after this whole furore, the AUs all understand the implications of this. I've given them my written advice and policy guidance that they have to do a thorough review, and I'm, a, I, I'm sure all of them will take it very seriously. Mr. Lim Biao Chan. Thank you, Speaker. I just wanted to ask the Minister, I talked 37 cases of 
voyeurism over three years was quite a lot. And frankly, I'm quite disappointed that the AUs did not take earlier action to deal with the, to review their processes to better deal with the complaints. Uh, I'm just wondering whether Minister um, review why didn't the AU take further action having seen the number of cases that have been reported over three years. Because if we, if we don't get to the root of the problem, then whatever we do, the AUs will not do anything to um, review the process until the matter goes up to social media. So that, that's one point. Uh, two, two other queries. Uh, do the reported cases of voyeurism, or can the reported cases of voyeurism be publicized in campus newsletter to alert students of the extent of the problem? And uh, also whether the Minister will consider asking the AUs uh, to also publicize punishment of offenders uh, to students in the AUs so that, that there's also a learning message for everyone that um, there is some deterrent effect if the offenders, uh, the, the offenders must know that, or potential offenders must know that there would be appropriate punishment for them. The question is, uh, again, looking back, why didn't we realize this is serious? Um, I think, of course, we wish that there was a realization that this is a serious offense for a reason. It's a, it's a rising concern. But having said that, today, after this incident, I believe the EUs are all very aware, and I'm confident they will do something swift and decisive. I'm confident of that, and we'll work closely with them. As to publicizing the punishment, NUS actually have been publicizing uh, the cases, the sexual misconduct cases, and, uh, of, and the punishment that has been meted out to them. It's actually available on their student website, which is why after the incident, this latest incident, there were several press reports about past cases because it was publicly available within the NUS website. Um, I think we can publicize, but fundamentally, is what I mentioned, the penalties are just not stiff enough. I think we just need to toughen them up and send a strong signal that at the most egregious end of the offenses, there must be very stiff punishment. Mr. Leon Pereira. Thank you, sir. I just have uh, one supplementary question for Minister Indrani. So, uh, Minister Indrani alluded to the infrastructural changes that are happening in NUS now, the retrofitting of the shower cubicles, the locks, uh, additional security uh, cameras and so on. Uh, it is a shame that it took this incident of Miss Monica Bay coming forward before these changes uh, were actually made, given the, the number of uh, voyeurism offences that had taken place in the previous year. So my supplementary question would be, uh, are these infrastructural changes to enhance security uh, being done across the board you know, for all the IHLs, and is there a time frame for this to be, to be carried out? Thank you. The short answer is that all the IHLs are reviewing their security arrangements. Um, in the case of NUS, they've already embarked on it, uh, and they expect it to be completed in the coming months. And for the other AUs, um, they'll have to complete their review. But the short answer is that they're all looking at it, and their priority is to make sure that the campus is safe for students. Ms. Antio. Thank you, sir. Um, can I ask the Minister if, given uh, that this is happening across all the AUs and, and maybe other IHLs, are we looking to introduce codes and standards to universities and IHL to help them prevent and manage uh, sexual harassment on campus. Um, a second question is, are we considering, given the numbers that you have shared, uh, a kind of cross-campus body uh, that would um, help to manage um, such incidents? Because I'm wondering if a student actually do not um, stay in a university because he's been found um, to have committed an, an, a misconduct or an act, uh, would he then go to another university? And so is there this cross-campus um, sharing of information? Uh, and therefore, maybe that warrants a body to be set up. Thank you. I think the first thing to remember is that, you know, it doesn't take codes uh, and regulations to understand taking videos of somebody bathing is wrong. 
that is not rocket science. It just needs certain fundamental values, which is that you must respect other people, respect their privacy, respect their physical space, respect their emotional space. So we can, and the universities, the AUs, will be embarking, as I mentioned in my earlier response, embarking on better education for the students. But fundamentally, it boils down to values. That is a function partly of parents, partly of school and teachers, uh, and the individual himself or herself. Because if you adhere to that, you don't actually need to have codes and, and regulations. So the, the key thing is really um, making sure that individuals understand that something like this is not a light offence, it's not a, a light thing, it will be taken seriously and it will be dealt with seriously and appropriately as well. But there's also the other aspect which is rehabilitation because in, su in some cases either they have a, a, a problem that needs to be dealt with um, and it may require counselling, it may require additional uh, treatment in, in for those who are mentally not well. Um, so that is another aspect that we'll be looking at. Values, uh, education, rehabilitation. Mr. Ang Wienan. Thank you, Speaker. I have a follow-up question from, uh, for Ms. Indrani on the security arrangement of the hostels. I understand that uh, the students at the controversy of this uh, NUS Beeping Tom incident, he said that he was at the hostel after midnight with the intention to stay over at his girlfriend's hostel room even though he's not a, a, a person to stay in the hostel. So I would like to ask what is the security arrangement uh, for the NUS hostel and other hostels in other, under universities, where they allow people to go in the hostel after midnight, uh, and what is the response from the university? Thank you. The students uh, can and do uh, visit their friends in other hostels. Uh, so I think that this particular incident will be cause for the universities to uh, reflect on how that arrangement should be managed. Because obviously you don't want to prevent friends from coming to see uh, each other, but the uh, proper recording uh, and the security arrangements for that should be in place. So in, in short, as a result of this, I think the universities will be reviewing that much more closely. have to add, we, we need to do some firm measures, but also be careful not to overreact to the extent of not allowing students to visit each other or staying over these, after all, university campuses. And I think we can have lively, uh, a lively campus without having all the dangers and, and security lapses, which we will tighten up, no doubt. Ms. Fumiha. Thank you, Speaker. I have two supplementary questions for Minister. Um, I appreciate the, um, uh, the discretion that the respective AUs have to review their procedure in the light of Monica Bay's ordeal, but I would like to ask the Minister, would he think there is room for some form of minimum standards that the Ministry of Education would prescribe to the respective uh, boards that's reviewing um, the different measures to ensure there are some kind of minimum standards to which the disciplinary action that will be melted out. It's really um, kind of sending that strong signal that Minister referred to. Secondly, the safety measures, what would be the, some minimum standards where people live on the halls that will have to observe. And last but not least, what would be some of the minimum standards on training this, uh, and skills for the counsellors dealing with this sensitive matter of people being uh, uh, subject to uh, uh, sexual harassment? Thank you. I think we also need to uh, respect the fact that they are autonomous universities having their own board and really govern themselves in a fairly independent way, uh, separate from MOE. So to for us to issue standards or codes or rules to the universities, I think it would not be appropriate. We can do that for polytechnics because they are statutory boards. We can do that for IT. But for autonomous university, they are differently uh, incorporated and structured. But having said that, when I first issued my public statement that the penalties are manifestly inadequate, I think they all understood the standard that I was looking for. And I'm sure we'll work together 
not by MOE issuing rules and regulations, but through discussion, moral suasion, I'm sure we can come up with something feasible and workable and effective. Associate Professor Walter Tessera. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, speaker, just two questions for the Minister. I think the first is on the issue of standards. Uh, I think the concern here is that uh, if, for example, what attracts um, a suspension in what you, one university might only attract a reprimand or expulsion in another, then there would be a sense of injustice uh, that the universities differ significantly on the standards. And that is why I think it is important that the Ministry does come in, I think, with this uh, suasion and coordinated approach. Um, the second question is that I uh, think I think when we look at the disciplinary committees, there is some concern that they may not have the right expertise or skills uh, to discharge all of their functions because, frankly, they are not the police or the attorney general's chambers. They are not uh, professional adjudicators or, or finders of fact. So I wonder what can the ministry do here uh, to ensure that these committees have the skills necessary to interview uh, the parties concerned, to investigate and to uh, assure the public that, that the justice is being done here. The first question of inconsistencies across AUs, I, I wouldn't call that inconsistencies. Different AUs may well have slightly different uh, uh, disciplinary action, just as different companies will have different disciplinary actions when there are offences. Having said that, researchers uh, and academics, they, are, they stick to the discipline of peer review very closely, and I have no doubt in this aspect there will be some peer review going on. Uh, second question is, um, oh, uh, expertise. The, the, the disciplinary boards or the review committees will need to have certain um, members, including having student representatives. But of course, if they need enforcement or legal advice, I'm sure they can ask for it and they are able to tap on it. After all, it's a university, lots of different talent with different expertise. So I, I think we need to give them some time, some space to get that work done.